Hello, hi, welcome again to Hope Alive with Mary. I am super excited to be here again. How are you doing? I hope you're doing great and you are hanging on there. Don't you ever give up. Don't you ever give up. Never give up, okay? God has got your back. All right, welcome to my channel again. And for my subscribers, I say thank you to you. A huge thank you. God bless you. Uh, you make me a difference because of your subscription. You help the rating of the video you help christian channels and christian content on youtube and also um you get to know quickly when i get a new video so if you haven't also press the notification button do that if you haven't subscribed please do subscribe and don't forget to share share with others let's do this together okay we'll be looking at the topic of prayers for the past um four weeks now we've done part one part two part three now we'll be looking at part four of prayers Today, we'll be answering the question, where can I pray? We've talked about why it's important to pray. We've talked about how often should I pray. And now we're looking at where can I pray? And then if time permits, we'll look at another question and pray. Where can I pray? Everywhere. Everywhere is a place to pray. Because we are asked, God have told us to pray at all times. Never to stop praying. Never give up praying. Pray at all times. And then that means anywhere, everywhere. On your journey to work, when you wake up in the morning, in the afternoon, at night, any time of the day and everywhere. In the bathroom, in your office, while you're doing your job, you can pray. You go to the toilet, you can pray. You're on your bus or in your, your car driving to work, you can pray. While cooking, you can pray. Everywhere is a place to pray. There is no place you cannot pray. There is no place you are prohibited from praying. You can pray. Um, you, and it doesn't have to be loud because prayer is about you. A communication, bear in mind when established that it's a communication between you and God. Prayer is not about any a third party. You can pray with someone else, but praying with that person, it's in agreement to pray to God. So your prayer actually is directed at God, not to the person that you are praying with. So prayers is to God. So you can do it quietly. You could do pray in your, in your heart. You can pray loudly if you choose to, if you have, depending on where you are. I must stress this because some people pray. We have conditioned prayers to be exactly what it is not. They have become a religious thing about prayers. And I don't blame anyone because I also have that problem because of the way we are brought up. The way you get saved, depending on the church you went to. If you're somebody who went to a very conservative church, like a Catholic church or Orthodox church, if that's your orientation, you know, sometimes you will want to prefer the quiet prayers. And then when you join us in the Pentecostal, you want you tend to be louder, you tend to be more expressive, you want to tend to be more vocal with your prayers. And um, it's all about background. Okay, and I also believe it's also about personality. Don't try to pray like somebody else. I've seen people pray and as soon, they speak differently. Normally, if they're speaking, there's a particular way they speak. But as soon as you ask them to pray, they switch into this pastoral kind of voice, this pastoral kind of thing. Oh, God, oh, God, you have my God. Honestly, <laughs> you don't need all that. No, we don't need all that. Prayer is a communication between you and your father. One, he is not deaf, okay? No, but, and he's in you. It's not far up in the sky that you're trying to scream for him to hear you. God is right there in you. So if you don't, if your prayers don't even need to get to the ceiling. So you say, oh, scream so that God will hear you. Shout so that God will hear you. That was for the prophets of Baal. When um, <laughs> Elijah stood up, oh, shout, maybe he's on holiday. Oh, he's having a nap. Scream. So, no, our God is not deaf. Our God doesn't go on holiday. Our God, you don't need to scream. I do shout and I do pray loudly. But as I said, sometimes some of them is born out of our background orientation. And I don't fault that. Sometimes it makes you feel, you know, you're praying. Okay. And also, it depends on the prayer you're praying. Again, because if you're praying, if I am praying a warfare prayer, it, you know, it has to be violent because I can't tell the demons and tell the them, here you go, shish, shish, just, you know, shish. No, you tell him off. You tell him off. You don't tell someone off. I say, can't live here. No, you say, get out. You tell him, get out. You raise your voice. You raise the pitch of your voice and then you issue a command. So when it comes to warfare, when it comes to, you know, casting out demons and whatever, yes, I would raise my voice. But when it's about a supplication to God or a worship, you know, 
again, that also determine how, you know, the tone of your voice will go. But all I'm saying is I don't follow a particular tone. It doesn't have to, God is not saying you have to speak in that certain way or in certain tones before he hears you. If, once you remember that you're speaking to a God that is so near to you, a God that is very caring, a God that is very compassionate, a God that is a father. So just try to picture how you would speak to your father. If your father fits in this category, so I know some people don't have fathers that are loving, caring, and all that. So it, that would affect the way you speak to your earthly father. But I'm just saying, picture a perfect father. How would you communicate with the father? How would you, if you as a parent, how would you want your children to speak or communicate to you? Would you want them to come shouting, oh, mom, you are the best. Can you please? No, you want them to come to you and speak to you in a loving and respective tone. So, um, yeah, so that's as answered two questions about where can we pray? I've already said anytime, anywhere. And how should we shout? Should we do whatever? No, speak to God as your father. And then another thing I'm talking about where to pray. I need to also emphasize that in as much as we can pray anywhere and at any time, it is also important to have a designated place of prayer. Wherever, you know, there are certain prayers you pray on the go. So let me, let me clarify that. There are prayers you can pray anytime, anywhere. But at certain times, at some time, any, any, at every day, okay, when you have your time of prayer, you should have a time for prayer, okay? Pray all the time, remember, pray everywhere, but you should have a time for prayer and a place for prayer. Because if we look in the scripture, there are loads of examples of Jesus and a lot of others who have a time and place for prayers. Prayers, remember, it's between you and God. Jesus Christ said, when you pray, you don't need to stand in the public and make a show of it. Does that mean you cannot pray in the public? No. Making a show of it, as the hypocrites do, is what he was emphasizing on. So if there's need for you to play in the public, you go out on evangelism, you need to minister to somebody, you need to pray for somebody, you need to go on a prayer walk. Why not? Okay, you're not doing it for a show. Okay, if you are, as I said, evangelism, a crusade or something, or somebody suddenly before you, there's a need to pray. A need to pray shows up. An accident happened, something suddenly happened. Yes, you can pray, okay, but not for show off. Okay, but then God says his instruction to us, his emphasis, God wants you to have a secret place. And a secret place of prayer is not the public one. It's not the one you do amongst other people. It's even in church will be considered a public or even with your family can be a public. God wants you to have that time that it is you and him alone. Nice to have family prayer, nice to have you and your spouse praying together, nice to have the church prayers and whatever. But there is a time that you must have and you should make it a daily habit like Jesus did. Jesus prayed for his disciples, he ministered all the time. But he had his own time that he would pull away. The Bible says he will live and pray all night. Night, that brings us to night prayer. Night prayer is, midnight prayer is very effective. Midnight prayers are very powerful. A lot happens in the night. Time will not permit me to dwell on that. That would take a whole video on its own to bring up scriptures to back up what I'm saying. But night prayer is very effective. We saw Jesus do it. And again, early hours of the morning, we see Jesus, the Bible says he will wake up early hours. I don't want to go into much scriptures reading them so that because of time. So I'm going to be putting the scriptures out there for you to see. So, the Bible says he wakes up very early in the morning, long before it is day, and go to a solitary place. So talking about place, solitary place, a quiet place, a place that is just him and God. So you can create that place in your home. If your house is such a place, you don't have a room for it, you don't have a closet for it, you can use your bathroom. You can use the hours your children or your family are sleeping or every other person is sleeping and wake up to be that quiet place. People might be around, okay? Maybe someone is sleeping next door in another place. It can still be solitary because you isolated yourself from the noise, from the distraction, and it's just you and God. You could go out to the park, you know, I'm just referring for those who have such privileges, or any place that is quiet, anywhere. I remember when we were in university, the hostels are packed, so it's sometimes to have your quiet time. We used to go to where we call the prayer garden. You will get up early in the morning, and you see everybody in the different corner having their time with God at the prayer garden. We just go into some bushes to go pray. We go to different places to go and pray. So find that far, quiet place. You must, if I, I cannot overemphasize that, because that's when God, God does not, God doesn't give out the best in the open. 
God does not make his men in the open. You must be a woman and a man of the quiet place, of the secret place. You must learn to find that place that you withdraw to be with God. So what am I saying? You must, even though you can pray all the time, you must have a set time that you say, this time is my time to be with God in prayer. You can pray everywhere, but you must also have a place that you say, this place is where I meet with God. I knew that place can be anywhere. Okay. But again, I can also on the other side, it can be a quiet, you can be in a quiet place. Okay. You can be in a quiet place, but you there's still noise in you. So it's still not a quiet time you're having. Even there's noise in you, there's distraction. You are bothered about so many things. You can so so it's a distraction outside and on the inside so that you're quiet. I can remember prayers communication between you and God. Then you talk to God, you hear God speaks to you. So today I'm going to stop on those three things that we have answered. So we still go on and keep talking about prayers. We need to be fired up to pray now more than ever. They go deeper. If you're someone who used to pray for five minutes, increase it to seven minutes. Increase it to ten minutes. Keep pushing. Keep going deeper. Spend more time in the place of prayer. And you'll be amazed at what God will do in your life. And I will talk in the next video probably. I will speak about, you know, how, you know, long because sometimes you pray about something today i think i mentioned that already in i think in part two so where you can you tend to give up because answers are not coming no 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 don't give up and i also mentioned it in the last video as well i think don't give up keep pressing on keep praying until you see answers and even when you have seen answers don't stop praying keep praying because there are other things coming there are battles from different direction there you constantly have to be in touch with heaven things are changing things are unfolding the enemy are playing tricks they are tricks and they are you know, gimmicks everywhere. So we need to constantly be in touch with heaven. So I hope that has encouraged you to pray. Let me get out of here so that you can begin to pray. So take care of yourself and I'll be your way again very soon. I will stay talking about praise, the power of praise. God bless you. And don't forget to subscribe, share, and like. Leave me your comment. What's your idea about prayer? How is this video helping you? Is this stirring you to pray more? So let me know. God bless you.